Hey everybody, Tammy's shopping. She left me in the vehicle. I didn't want to go into the clothing store, so I thought it'd be more fun to do a Q&A session. All right, so let's have a look here. Trent, so is it normal for a copy of Pied on cream to show up as straight white patches on paws, diamonds on back, flame points on face? Well, you kind of got some strange uh, description there, so I'm not exactly what's sure what's going on. But um, a dog that has a copy of Pied will normally have some white on its chest. A dog that has a copy of Cream won't show anything to indicate it, other than the fact that if it has tan points, those tan points are likely to be lighter. So both Pied and Cream take two copies to be expressed, so you've got to be little e, little e to be a Cream dog. And that covers everything up, including Pied, Brindle and everything else. You can't see it, it just looks like a white dog. Uh, with a pied dog, I'd have two copies of pied for it to be a pied dog, but a single copy does produce some, typically some white on a dog's chest. So I uh, hope that helps. Uh, someone's saying nice things about us, I like that. Uh, Harold Valverde, let me ask something. If I have 6.2 breeding in two days, no, I wouldn't. So five is ovulation, the next day it's an eight, the day after it's a 15, you breathe on a 15. So if you're at a six, you are darn close to being at an eight because it goes up really quickly. I would breed tomorrow, wait two days and breed again. Uh, There's a long one here. Ooh, better read this before I... Well, I'm going to have to read that later because that's too long for me to be going through all that. Uh, what is the youngest age you should test a puppy for this? Talking about brucellosis. I would test any dog that is has come to you from outside that is a year or older. I would absolutely test for brucellosis. A puppy that's been on your property and you don't have any signs of brucellosis with any of the other dogs because you've tested them, then you're probably fine. But if you're in doubt, test when they're a year old. Uh, someone's asking, do we sell? I think they're asking, do we sell puppies and where we located? Yes, we do. We don't have very many litters a year. We're, late, we're late, located in Western Oklahoma. Craig James says, please, can you update on studs and shipping to the UK? I'm going to do put a whole bunch of videos and update the website because I've been pretty lax on this. So the answer to that is yes, we will do that. Brittany Boyer, I completed an AI, held her up for 30 minutes. However, an hour and a half later, I did... The AI, is there any chance she's still caught? Large deposit of 30 mils of fluid, is this normal? Well, I'm not sure what you're telling me here. It sounds to me like what you did is you did an AI at 30 minutes and then an hour and a half later you did another AI. That's gonna be an issue. I don't think there's gonna be enough room in the dog to hold everything in and that's exactly what happened. So my rule is keep the dog elevated for 30 minutes, let it down slowly. If there's any dripping, break it back up on your leg and do that for 15 minutes more and check again. And keep on doing that until you get no leakage. And that can be an hour before that happens. But if you did two AIs an hour and a half apart, I don't think the second load one's going to as much as going to stay in. Will she get pregnant? Yeah, probably. But we'd much rather, obviously, you know, if all the semen comes out, it's not going to happen. So we'd, we'd rather than the majority of the semen stays inside the dog. 30 mils is a huge amount. I don't know why they're putting 30 mils in. Um, you know, there's ways that you can, you can avoid this. For instance, if you've got 30 mils, what you could do is you can centrifuge at a very slow speed, get the prostate fluid and extender off the top and just go ahead and get yourself five cc's of material to work with. And you have a much better luck about that staying in the dog. But if you're going to, if you're going to spin it, you've got to spin it on the slowest setting slow. Don't spin it fast. You will kill the semen if you spin it fast. You've got to put the lowest setting for about five or 10 minutes. And what'll happen is, when you look at it after that length of time, you'll see there's kind of a white area, you know, it looks like a little plug in the very bottom of the test tube. That's all the semen. You can take all the clear fluid off the top, just leave yourself enough fluid to work with, five cc's, seven cc's, give it a good shake, stick it up into semen, into an AI rod and go to town. Uh, I'm, are we talking about eating poop? Michelle Ego says, I'm currently dealing with this with two of my Frenchie pups, with their mum. She did it also when she was a pup. It took a few months to cure it from her and she got severely sick from it. Yeah, right, well, yeah, I mean, all you can do is follow the guidelines, 
keep the poop away when they when it's time for them to eat take them out to poop afterwards encourage them to not eat poop give them play time and treats when they don't eat their poop just get them in the in the right frame of mind oh Josie uh, Marte says GSD I asked what GSD was and GSD stands for German Shepherd Dog Hi, I have a question. My dog mated one time only. Is she able to get pregnant? Absolutely. If you've got the timing right with decent semen done the right way, she gets pregnant. So yeah, you don't have to do more than one. The reason we do more than one is to increase our odds and to get a better idea on the timing so we can slip a little bit and be okay. But one breeding at the right time, absolutely get a dog pregnant. And by the way, people doing surgical AIs, that's normally what they do is a single, single insemination surgically one time. Uh, David Delargo says, my Frenchie doesn't bleed, but does get puffed up. So she has back end swells up. She's already had her first heat cycle. Can someone tell me what to do in case we want to breed her in the future without missing her heat cycle? Okay, so, I mean, with any luck, the next heat cycle will be more regular and you will see some blood and you'll see day one with drops of blood and then you can start doing your progesterone tests about day seven. If she puffs up, no signs of blood, get a Q-tip, stick a Q-tip up in there, and maybe you'll see some signs of blood on that, and you can use that as an indicator as how far along she is. And if in doubt, progesterone test, because if she's having a completely silent heat, how could you possibly know? And the answer is, you're gonna have to do a progesterone test at times when you think maybe she might be in heat. It can get expensive. Uh, Tiago Hortina, how can I contact you for stud info? Do you, you ship in Portugal? I tried the number through WhatsApp, but nobody answered. Well, I'll try my number, uh, 580-799-2873. I'll WhatsApp you. Uh, so uh, DC Fourbanger says, I'd love to, for you to touch base on the intensity gene. Yes, I will do a video on intensity genes. And another question, where, where does the red in red fawns come from? Um, so the answer is, yeah. So AYAY dogs are fawn dogs, but that fawn can be anywhere from a very, very light color, almost cream, all the way through red. So you can't do a DNA and from that DNA say, I know what color this fawn dog will be. There's other things involved in this and they're not available to us to know what they are. We don't know what those DNA links are. So typically you put two red dogs together, they're fawns, but they produce red puppies. Um, so, uh, you know, that's about all I can tell you. Um, yep. Why don't you guys make an Instagram just for your studs? Because we're lazy. We need to. Have you ever had a puppy with a liver shunt? Yes. So a liver shunt is where you've got a puppy that typically is a small puppy that's it's having a hard time. It's losing compared to its siblings. It's, it always stays small and then you get to be worried about what's going on. And one of the things that can happen is what's called a liver shunt. And what happens in a liver shunt is that it, it grows from extra um, uh, tubing, plumbing, that shunts around the liver, and those dogs then get in trouble. Uh, you can diagnose that when they're probably 10 weeks old with a, with a um, um, ultrasound. And you can do surgery on these dogs and you can give uh, medications to help them too. Um, but we did have a dog with a liver shunt and I don't remember what happened to that dog. Do you remember that dog that had a liver shunt? We got it diagnosed over there. It's, uh... Was it one of the labs? No, 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 this, is, this was a few years back. Oh, no, I don't remember. Okay, I'm trying to think what happened. Oh, I do know what happened. Yes, that did not happen. The dog had a liver shunt, was diagnosed with an ultrasound as a liver shunt. We were, we left the, and actually the dog got in some trouble over this. It, it was really starting to get in bad shape because its liver was not getting rid of stuff in its blood. And so its bilirubin uh, levels went up high. It, 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 and we got to the point where he was trying to stabilize the dog so he could do surgery. And unfortunately the dog died before that happened. So that was our experience with this, wasn't good. Um, but it can be fixed. We obviously got to diagnose it first, and the right way to diagnose that would be an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. Look at those statues right here. Oh, so somebody's talking about Val Kilmer. That's right. Val Kilmer was the person we were looking for. Look here. Yeah, they're pretty. Uh, 
Andrea Garcia says, um, when do puppies no longer need the heating system and can be on a regular, regular temperatures? Yeah, three and a half weeks, about that. That's about the time you can turn off. What you'll find is, is if you've got the heat system on and they're congregating under the pig rail, leave it on. But the moment when they start to not be, not be so concerned about being under the pig rail, they're getting enough heat at that point, you can turn it off. And you can't do any harm by turning it on. If a puppy's getting a little bit too hot, they'll just move away off the pig rail slightly and just get to the area they want. So, yeah. Onor Keklik says, hello. Just a quick question, if you could please help. I have a 17 week old French Bulldog and she has been itching quite a lot recently with the main spots on either side of her abdomen and has caused some hair loss. Uh, the vet has no idea and recommended we change her diet, which we have last week, no change. Can we give me some advice, please? So, I mean, there's a number of reasons for itching and hair loss. There are more serious problems like uh, um, red mange uh, and demodex they don't typically show up on the side of the abdomen they show up more on the paws and on the face so I doubt very much that's what's going on here but anytime you've got hair loss that's continued to go on the first thing to do is a skin scraping and with a skin scraping you can rule out all the things like mites and bugs that it might be so skin scraping easy to do it's not expensive basically what they do is they get a scalpel put some oil on it and they vigorously scratch the surface and actually make it red and then they then take that and put it on a microscope slide look at it and see if they can see any demodex or any or any um, basically parasites that could cause um, hair loss um, it's probably not that. So then the next thing is, what are they? It could be food allergies, it could be um, pollen allergies, it could be grass allergies. Um, and so one of the things to do is to go onto a more bland diet, which sounds like you've done, which would be to go onto a, uh, you know, made for chicken and rice diet, or even a do-it-yourself boiled, boiled chicken and rice, and see whether that fixes the problem over a couple of week period. If it doesn't, then I mean, I would be thinking about, okay, does this get worse when the dog's outside? And the way to find that out is to keep the dog inside strictly for another four or five days and see what happens, see if that makes it better. And then if you then let the dog out, it immediately gets worse. So then you can decide if it's an environmental issue. Because if it's environmental, then you've got two choices. You don't put her in that environment or you give her drugs to let her counteract this. And there are various different drugs that you can give to dogs to help them when they've got allergy problems. Exactly what the names of those are, I don't know but your vet will know about those. So I think back to what we're talking about here, number one, skin scraping, make sure that this is not some parasite that's on the surface of a skin. Number two, change of that's not the finger I mean to give you. <laughs> that's not good, that's, <laughs> let's just put that as number two. There we go, that's better. Number two is, uh, excuse my stupidity. Number two is um, um, with, with this diet change to a more bland diet. And specifically, if you can put on a diet that you are providing, which is just chicken and rice, you know there's any no other byproducts in there. And then number three is, is, that, is this an outside allergy problem? And then, you know, keep the dog from being outside, see if that helps the problem. If it doesn't, you've either got to remove the allergens, remove the dog from the, from, from the area where the allergens are, or start giving some kind of treatments to counteract that. Dogs can get pretty uncomfortable with this stuff, by the way, so, and it is kind of a little bit of a Frenchy thing, and so some Frenchies do battle this. Um, anyway, I think that I've, uh, see how much time I've wasted. Well, someone's calling me, so I can't tell. But anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.